What's going on? Hope everybody's having an amazing Sunday. I just got back from the gym, made myself a little sandwich, had a little protein shake, feeling the vibes, you know? So we're gonna switch this up a little bit. This is Sunday Sessions, episode 16. Dima said, how much does it cost to open an LLC in the USA? Depends on the state you're in, but a couple hundred bucks. I encourage you not to use a lawyer either. All you need is a business address and a, I'm pretty sure that's it. Maybe a bank account, but there's not a lot. It's pretty straightforward. A lot of people pay companies to do it for them, but it's so simple. You literally just need to go to your state website and take care of it. It's pretty basic stuff. The Brazilian wave on Amazon, I'm here for it. I'm here for the Brazilian Wave. We're actually hosting in Atlanta on September 3rd and September 4th. The Brazilian Wave is so big on Amazon right now that we're actually doing a Brazilian specific event where it's only for Brazilian speakers. We're gonna have translator headsets um, and it's gonna be focused for the Brazilian community, the Portuguese speaking community. So that should be exciting. How's everybody doing though? Talk to me. Uh, somebody just said, your content and words have been awesome, Eric. Keep it up. I'll see you in Las Vegas this go around, my friend. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, so there is an event planned for the Northeast. Um, we're gonna do New Jersey, probably fall, you know, get some pumpkin spice lattes. You know what I'm saying? Just switch it up a little, we'll get a little pumpkin spice latte in the mix. On a nice cool fall day, maybe throw a nice little hoodie on, put the hood up. You know, get, get some little lounge chairs, maybe a little campfire. We're definitely gonna be doing something in New Jersey for my locals, for my natives, for the homies. Yeah, we have a few exclusive contracts with brands. Um, makes up a small percentage of our business, though, right around 10%. Jorge, I see you in here, man. First of all, everybody, send your prayers out to Jorge, a.k.a. J Biz on Instagram. You know, he's been dealing with some uh, health issues, and, and, and he was there for me. But he was one of the people who was consistent reaching out to me when, when I went through my health scare about two months ago. And, and he's going through his now. And... And, uh, you know, we just want to be there for him as a community. You know, as a community, we want to show up and, and just make sure that we're there for him and keeping him in our prayers because he's an important aspect and he's a important person in my life. And, uh, you know, we're wishing you the best for him. Hey, we really are, brother. I want to do away with drop shipping from Amazon. Yeah, drop shipping is whack. Boy, you got me all emotional over here, man. Uh, drop shipping is whack. <laughs> Um, well, listen, it's not that it's whack. It's just, it's tough to, tough to scale, you know? It's tough to scale. Uh, a lot of people are getting kicked off because of drop shipping. We deal with, we probably get one email a week or one Facebook or Instagram message a week about a suspension for somebody drop shipping. How do you feel about uh, TWF Jazzle? I, I, I have it, you know? Um, I do research on other courses, so... I bought a lot of them and uh, the one thing I didn't like was uh, it's just brand direct specific. They don't cover anything about wholesalers, distributors. It's like to each his own though, you know? Have you tried selling brands that are restricted in the US on EU or other countries? I have not. Uh, Brian, listen, Jerry Hustles, uh, AC man, there's only one thing to do in AC and that's gamble, you know? It's like, there's no, see the way I see it with New Jersey and any of my New Jerseyans will understand this. So there's no Central Jersey. It's just North Jersey, South Jersey. Central Jersey essentially doesn't exist. And, and the border from North Jersey and South Jersey is the Driscoll Bridge, which is right by, I think that's like one exit, 110 maybe on the parkway. But yeah, uh, there's no Central Jersey. And the only thing in South Jersey, Jerry, is Atlantic City. Everything other than Atlantic City and South Jersey is just useless. You know, maybe actually that's a lie. They got some nice beaches down there. But other than that, it's like on the coast. Anything on the coast is cool. That's that's practically North Jersey too. But like when you go in the middle of South Jersey, it's central South Jersey, there ain't shit out there. It's like you might as well not even you might as well not even be there. How has Ted helped our business grow? So for anybody that doesn't know, Humble Ted is Sebastian's uncle. Is what Ted does is he's our CFO. Right, so he manages all the accounts payable, accounts receivable. 
Um, and he's a valuable asset to the company because he comes into the business with about 25 to 30 years as an executive manager for Bimbo Bakery, which is the company that produces Thomas's English muffins. So he's been managing people and managing a, a very large business or sector of a very large business for, for about 25 years. And a couple of years ago, he retired and he became a full-time staple at Amazon Lit. So his value, his knowledge and insight on managing people is really second to none. It really comes in handy when we're trying to make executive decisions that Sebastian and I may be unsure about because, you know, we're young, we're still in our early 30s, right? So we don't have the life experience that Ted has and the wisdom that Ted has. So he's a valuable asset to the business. Um, and also he pays all the bills, right? So he's the one communicating with vendors and distributors and, you know, juggling the different invoices and the different payments that are due and making sure everything's up to date and then communicating that information with our CPA to make sure our books are straight and then taking that all to our tax guy. And like, it's just, it's a, it's, he's a cog in the wheel. Right, and the wheel keeps spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning, and, t and Ted is a is a big aspect of that. So can I change product listing pictures if the listing pictures all packaging? You can create a case and attempt to. You you can create a case with Amazon and try. So the way you would create a case to edit a listing out of pictures first, you go to the Edit Listing tab. Um, and you edit the images. So you change out the images that you wanna change out and you replace them with new images. And then right after you click save, you create a case and say, hey, Amazon for ASIN, blah, blah, blah. I just updated the images for this. Um, here is a link to the manufacturer's website um, proving that the images are correct and there's been a package change. Can you please approve these listing images change, image changes? And then they'll review it and most likely they'll deny it, but it's worth a shot. Sometimes you get away with it. Um, in which state should I open LLC if I am from Ukraine? Uh, you can look into Delaware, also Nevada. Those have some great tax incentives there. Um, but also really what, whatever's just convenient for you. If you know somebody and you can put the business address at their, their home and in, in their state, you know, the tax advantages are, especially if you're just starting, they're not gonna be crazy. Who bought a badge? I fuck with you. Empire Distribution, buy the badges. I just turned badges on for the first time, I think last week. I guess it's just a way for like the community to show appreciation. Um, I'm just trying it out. But Empire Distribution, I appreciate you. Oh, also, while, while we got him in here, if he's still in here, let me go over the sponsors real quick. Oh, we got Scan Unlimited. And if anybody's looking for a UPC scraper, just send me a DM. I'll send you a link to 50% off Scan Unlimited. Then we have Empire Distribution. They're a wholesaler located in, I think, Central California. Uh, I could be mistaken about the exact location, but definitely California. And they work with mom and pop stores, brick and mortar stores, Amazon sellers, eBay sellers, Walmart our sellers they work with companies like that and distribute products to them and i was just looking on their story if you want to check them out it's empire.distribution.usa they should be in here somewhere if they just want to post a little fire emoji in the comments so people can see them but yeah they got some good products as well the third sponsor is asin zen they have a chrome extension called az insight now all of these all of these sponsors are companies that i've either worked with personally or i know someone who's worked with personally and i trust their services i wouldn't add them as a sponsor if i didn't believe in them but az insight i think is a superior amazon calculator it's a chrome extension that pops up right on amazon listing and it says if it's hazmat if it's meltable what size it is it gives you a small light discount if there is one it tells you if it's oversized it's got the upc the parent asin the regular racing, it's got everything. It's got the dimensions and the weight. It calculates any discounts. It's pretty amazing. And if anybody would like a link to that, they're offering $25 off their annual subscription, which I think is like 150 bucks normally, which is well worth it. It's well worth it. Uh, DJ Gilbo, how many total ASINs do we have? Uh, on a regular day, we got about four, three to four thousand different asins or different SKUs in stock and um on any given day we have about two hundred and eighty thousand units or orders available in amazon so our storage limit's about one million it's about a million 
Um, and, and the storage limit's pretty straightforward. It's, uh, what are they doing? They're taking 13 weeks of sales, right? So they're looking at your past 13 weeks of sales and then they're saying, hey, that's gonna be your storage limit, which makes perfect sense because um, every month we sell about 280,000 orders and 13 weeks, you know, so 280 divided by four times 13 is right around 950,000 and our storage limit's about a million, so. Um, and, and we've done the math on other people's accounts. I think one of the most important stories I can tell to kind of point out the importance of going to trade shows is about four years ago, maybe three and a half years ago, I met this company at, um, I forgot what it was, maybe the Fancy Food Show or maybe it was Expo East. Anyway, at the time he was working for a completely different company, you know, but I liked the guy. I, I went up to his booth, we started talking and and the conversation flowed and I got a good vibe from him. And at the time I was interested in carrying the brands that he was representing, right? He's one of these like managers who goes from brand to brand and helps grow their brands. So like we we kind of kicked it off, right? And then like he, he wasn't interested in offering me his products at the time. And then I see him, maybe it was three months later, I'm talking, this is 2000, probably 18. It was probably September, 2018 and I see him uh, a few months later, another trade show. He's still with the same brand and he's still not interested, right? But I go, I say, what's up to him? We kick the shift for 10, 15 minutes. And then I see him maybe six months later at another trade show. And now he's with a different brand, the brand he's currently with today. And, uh, you know, well, once again, I say, yo, yo, Brian, what's up, man? Just check it in. Hope all's well. I see you're with this new brand. Let me check out the packaging. Wow, I love this packaging. I know my uh, you know, my nephews love eating this product. It's a great product. And uh, he's like, yeah, we're not really interested in offering it to you to sell on Amazon right now. And I saw him maybe one or two more times at trade shows and he still kept saying no. Um, and then finally, February of 2020, so about eight, six, 18 months ago, he called me and he said, Eric, I'd like to come by your office. I, uh, I'm ready to do business. And he came by our office and now we place bi-weekly truckloads with his with his company you know we just got a thirty-five thousand dollar order on thursday um which was all set to amazon you know out of that thirty-five thousand, we'll pull in about 15k in profit 15 to 18k in profit and that's every other week we're doing that so you're looking at 25 times 18 you're looking at four hundred and fifty thousand dollars yeah it's a great company it's bringing us almost a half billion dollars in profit and that's from going to trade shows and that relationship didn't happen at the trade show that relationship well it started at the trade show but it didn't close at that initial trade show it took three years to build but through time it happened do you work private label too or only wholesale no we do some uh we do some private label uh we definitely do some private label uh makes up a small percentage of our business around eight to ten percent we got some great baby products in in our private label category um we also got a great i think it's maybe kitchen it's like health and household product. We've been selling this product for three, four years. It's just consistent. It doesn't bring in huge profits, but it's like 15 grand every month, you know, just from selling the same SKUs that we first created and having edited the listings, not running any ads on them anymore, still bringing in 15 grand a month, which is 180 grand a year in profit. So kind of helps the bottom line, you know. Our advice on ASIN bundling and new listing creation really bought my business up. That's dope, man. Um, I continue learning by a few things. Uh, I listen to podcasts. I'm always learning new stuff on YouTube as well. Um, I surround myself with other people who are more intelligent than me. Not just more intelligent, but more spiritually fit, more physically fit, more mentally fit. I'm more business savvy, that's important to me. You know, I also attend conferences and trade shows all over the country. So yeah, there's there's a lot I do. Santiago, so Santiago asked, do I think that emailing or talking to the company is better? I think an assortment of both is good. It really depends. Some companies are better on the phone. Some are better in um, through email. It really depends. How's the beginner's course for 97 bucks? It's phenomenal. It shows you how to register a business, how to create an Amazon account, all the software that you need, how to package your first products and how to ship your first products to Amazon. And for 99 bucks, it's a no brainer. That's our beginner's course, our beginner's bundles for 99 bucks. Um, so what most people do, if they're A, 
tight on funds or B, just have little experience and they're trying to gain some experience, they'll purchase our beginner's bundle. And then usually in about two weeks, once they've watched all the videos and they started, uh, you know, doing some product research, then they'll come and they'll get the full eSellers RI training program. You know, so it's kind of like a taste of what you'll receive. Let me answer this last question. I'm addicted to this shit. How do you deal with competing with the bigger fish on Amazon? Drop your price, right? You got to stay competitive. So, you know, run some ads, drop your price. You got to you gotta get the sales coming through. That's what's important. In the beginning, it's not about the profit. It's about getting the sales, growing your customer feedback, getting more customer reviews, doing all that good stuff. All right, everyone. This has been fun. I enjoyed spending this 30 minutes with y'all. I'll see ya. Everybody have a phenomenal day. Stay lit. Exactly, J-Biz. Look at the big picture. It's a marathon. Thank you. All right. See you, everybody.